ba yung laman ng ating bag? Unang-una, bawal po yung electronic devices such as gadgets, yung cameras, yung cellphone ninyo, bawal po yan. Kahit USB or USB cord, bawal po yan. And yung mga sharp objects, okay? So, yung mga tools na matutulis po, bawal po yan, okay? So, kung nagdadalo po kayo ng makeup, kasi every every once in a while ay nagre-retouch po kayo, or let's say every 30 minutes ay nagre-retouch po kayo, and then may ibang makeup kit kasi na may tweezer, so kung ayaw nyo na ma-confiscate, might as well leave it behind na lang sa hotel. Okay, so anyway, uh, yung schedule ay, or yung interview ay nagtitake lang ng 2 to 3 hours. Depende po kasi kung marami pong uh, applicants, so tatagal po yung interview. At uh, depende rin po yan sa availability ng mga consuls o yung mga uh, magpa-process po ng visa. Okay. Okay, so pagpasok po natin ng US Embassy, there are only three steps before we get our visa approved. Okay, so iga-guide po tayo ng isa sa mga person who na nasa loob. And then they are going to tell us which window we are going to uh, fall in line. Okay, basically the first window is yung pre-screening interview. Okay, so may mga Pinoy po na interviewers po for your pre-screening and at the same time, dito po kukunin yung lahat ng mga original documents na meron po kayo. Okay, so don't forget to bring along with you your proof of relationship, let's say, your pictures together, yung uh, messages po ninyo, kung nagpapadala po siya ng money, yung uh, receipts from... Western Union or any other remittance agencies. Okay, so after noon, basic lang naman yung uh, questions kasi, of course, uh, imamatch nila yung data sa profile ng uh, fiancé ninyo, kung talagang kilala nyo yung fiancé ninyo, let's say, yung uh, pangalan ng fiancé ninyo, kailan siya ipinanganak, and then, divorce na ba siya or hindi, basta yung mga basic info lang po ng fiancé ninyo. Okay, so hindi ito masyadong nakakakaba kasi Pinoy lang rin naman yung uh, mag-interview sa atin. And if you're not that confident in speaking the English language, so might as well speak in our own, okay? S speak using our language, okay? So the next thing is that igagayad po nila kung aling window po kayo pipila, okay? So the second step is yung uh, ID capturing. So, you can capture nila yung ID ninyo and then yung fingerprints or yung specimen po ninyo. Okay, so may kunting interview rin and then kung hindi po nila uh, change yun, so we, um, American po yung uh, mag-facilitate nito. Pero madali lang rin naman. Okay, the final one is yung consul. Okay, so final interview with the consul. So basically, when they say consuls, so galing sila sa America or they're American citizens. Okay. So, ano nga ba yung uh, dapat gawin pag time na ng final interview natin? Of course, let us just uh, show confidence. Let it come out from your heart. For sure, alam niyo yung information ng mga fiancé ninyo, di ba? Okay. So, Kung masyadong hindi kayo sanay sa mga interview ng, na ganito, so normal lang naman nakakabahan. Pero for sure, kung kilala nyo yung fiancé ninyo, definitely hindi po kayo magkakamali. Let's say yung questions ay napaka-simple lang. Ano nga ba yung uh, full name ng fiancé ninyo? Kailan siya ipananganak? And then, ilang bes beses na siya na-divorce? For example, divorce siya or kung single siya, ano nga ba yung occupation niya, kailan kayo nagkakilala, kailan siya na-divorce, okay, and then, ano yung pangalan ng ex-wife niya, so, might as well, pwede nyo naman itong i-gather, kung hindi po kayo sure, let's say, sa divorce date ng fiancé ninyo, pwede nyo naman i-state yung uh, year and, and yung month, okay, so, titingnan naman kasi nila yan sa profile ng fiancé 
ninyo and then i-match nyo lang sa mga sinasabi nyo. At saka yung DS-160 form na fill out ninyo online, titingnan rin nila iyon. And kung uh, nakikita nila na wala namang mga discrepancies sa mga sinasabi ninyo ay, of course, i-recommend po nila for approval yung K-1 visa ninyo. Okay, so I would like to say that K-1 visa has a high percentage rate of approval. Why? Because the U.S. government has to make sure that your fiancé is able to support you when you are in the U.S. So basically, hindi po tayo or hindi po kayo dadating sa point ng interview kung yung fiancé ninyo ay hindi kayang buhayin kayo sa U.S. Okay? So, tips lang po kasi based on my experience, my batchmate po ako na nakakaroon po ng problema during her interview. Let's say, uh, she was called first for her interview and I would like to say na yung natapat po siya sa konsul na masyadong strict. Or makita mo naman sa profile ng isang tao na strict, di ba? So, yung nangyari, mas una siyang tinawag and then parang hindi, uh, hindi satisfied yung konsul sa mga sagot niya. So, nagtawag yung konsul ng interpreter. Ang nangyari po ay, of course, nagtawag ng interpreter, so yung kinakausap niya ay Pinoy. Okay, so, I would say na siguro hindi masyadong high yung level niya in terms of uh, English speaking. Pero, sino ba namang uh, hindi kakabahan, di ba? Especially if you are not used to uh, talking to people or speaking to people who are quite higher than us. Okay. So, yung nangyari ay doubtful po yung consul and then ang raming tanong sa kanya, kailan kayo nagkita, uh, ilang beses kayo nagkita and then why did you end up going to the US after six months of uh, being together, let's say, six months lang po sila nagkakilala and then yung guy or yung fiancé niya ay twice na divorce. So, may mga doubts yung consul kasi uh, parang hindi rin nasagot niya ng maayos and then, yun, ang tagal na, ang tagal natapos na interview nila. So, let's say mas nauna siyang na-interview and then, hindi pa siya tapos after nang ma-interview pa ako. Let's say, yung, yung interview naman kasi, it only take 2 to 3 minutes, depending on your consult. Okay, so, depende rin po yan sa mag-interview at depende po yan kung uh, the way pag sumagot ka ay uh, diretsyo. Uh, let's say, alam na alam mo yung mga sinasabi mo in hindi ka masyadong kinakabahan. But I would like to say normal yung kakabahan kasi ako, of course, in my own, kinakabahan ako. Sino ba namang hindi? ba? Pero, alam ko yung information ng fiancé ko, kaya madali lang. Okay, so, what happens pagtapos na po kayong interviewin? Okay, so, yung consul, they will say na I am recommending your visa application for approval or they are going to say your visa is approved or your K-1 visa is approved. Okay, so after that, they're going to instruct you to pick a pamphlet. So, nasa labas po yan ng window and uh, kukunin, nyo lang ng, kukunin nyo lang and ibibrief po kayo kung ano nga ba yung uh, dapat nyo gawin. For example, ay... Uh, mabiktima po kayo ng domestic violence sa US. Okay, so, uh, yun po yung isa sa mga tinatalakay in our seminar. Okay, so, pag dumating po sa point na ganito ay uh, magagather mo na ng proofs and yun, doon mo na parang isusu yung fiancé ninyo or doon mo na doon mo na i-divorce. Okay, so hopefully hindi hindi mangyayari yun sa inyo or ni kahit isa, sino man, ni kahit sino kasi hindi rin yan madali and then 
Kula po tayong kakilala sa US. So, so far, yun po yung mga na-experience ko. And then, after nun, you will just have to wait like a week for you to be able to receive your K-1 visa. Okay, so, depending na po yan kung ipipick up ninyo yung K-1 visa ninyo or you will have it delivered to your address. Okay, so I hope you learned something in this vlog and see you in my next vlog.